Chapter 24. Page 269. In the latter part of April, Robert decided that he must return to New York and take up his duties. He said goodbye to Lady Bursford. Was profuse in his thanks. Assured her that he owed her a great debt of gratitude for the comforting messages, that she had brought to him through laughing waters. And above all was under lasting obligation for the great kindness she had rendered in bringing him to Sebring where he had fully regained his health. She assured him that it was a real pleasure to her to have been of service and invited him to visit her estate in England on his next trip over. As Robert started toward New York, his heart was light. His hopes were revived and he had greater faith than ever that Marie was alive. And would in the not distant future return to him. When he arrived in New York he went direct to his office and laboratory. Walter and Edna greeted him with enthusiasm. We're happy to see him looking so well. Walter grabbed both of Robert's hands and said. Old pal, I have never seen you looking so well. You must have found Ponce de Leon's fountain of eternal youth while you were in Florida. Robert replied, I certainly did. Had some wonderful experience at Silver Springs, the most beautiful spot in Florida. It was there that I received information that made me very happy because it made me sure that Marie is alive and will return to me. Also while there I heard about the most wonderful health resort in the world at Sebring, Florida, where I went and indeed found the fountain of youth. Spending over a month there playing, fishing and boating. It is about the only place in Florida where you can get good water to drink without having it shipped in. The sunshine and climate are ideal. I began to get better the second day after I was there and gained strength every day. You should certainly go to Florida on a vacation next winter and spend your time at Sebring. If you ever get married, be sure to go to Silver Springs on your honeymoon for you will enjoy this beautiful spot and scenery. Take the trip down Silver River to the Oklawaha, then down the beautiful St. John's River. If you can make the trip next March or early April, you will find nature at her best. You will forget all of your troubles. For nature has so staged the scenery that it reminds you only of pleasant things and inspires. Hope and happiness in the future. When Robert had finished telling about the beauties of Florida, Walter acted bashful and Edna looked rather sheepish. Then Walter said, Robert, we have a big surprise for you. Edna and I are going to be married in June. Well, this is quite a surprise, said Robert, but I knew it would come sooner or later. You must have thought I guessed it when I talked about you going on a honeymoon. I congratulate you both and wish you all the happiness in the world. You are entitled to it and I know that you will be happy together. The news of their coming marriage was not the only good news they had. Walter and Edna had been working day and night for months on a great chemical discovery and had now succeeded in completing it. This discovery was a perfectly harmless gas to be used in war or for medical purposes. It would put people to sleep and they would remain asleep for seven days, with no ill effects. It had always been Robert's desire to have something to use in war. Which would not destroy human lives and he was very much elated over Walter's discovery. Walter told him that he had already tested it and that Edna had such confidence in him she had taken the gas, remained asleep for seven days, and felt no ill effects. Walter knew just exactly why it worked. Because he was a great chemist and knew the natural law behind the discovery. He told Robert that this must be kept a secret until time of war when with the new ship. Marie the Angel of Mercy. Traveling 1,000 miles an hour. They could go from one city to another or from one battlefield to another. Release the gas and put everyone to sleep for seven days. In the meantime, with the demon of death. They could destroy the enemy's bases and fortifications. Would be able to make their own peace terms with the enemy. And at the same time obey the divine command of God thou shalt not kill. Cotton had been advancing rapidly and Robert and Walter were making money fast. Robert told Walter and Edna that on June 9th, his birthday, he was going to give them a big dinner and celebration before their marriage. It was now time to declare a holiday and have a real jubilee celebration after their great discoveries were completed. Then it was but fitting to crown the event with the marriage of Edna and Walter. They were now in position to sit calmly by and wait for the great war in the air, knowing that with their secret discoveries, they were prepared to save the United States in time of war, and at the same time without sacrificing too many human lives. The birthday party was a great success. Robert spared no expense in order to have everything of the best. Before the dinner, which was served in a private dining room, Robert sprung a great surprise. He arose and made the following speech. Comrades and friends, we have traveled the path of life together. Some of us have run the gauntlet of human emotions. We have gone down to the depths of despair, have reached the heights of financial glory, have seen our greatest dreams realized. God has been good to us. Our great discoveries are now completed. Fame and fortune have crowned our efforts. You Edna, and Walter, are now to reach the heights of greatest bliss. 
you are to have the satisfaction of being united in marriage, to continue your work together and do the greatest good for the greatest number. You have been unselfish in your devotion to me and in your loyalty to your country. The Bible says that where two or three are gathered together, their God will be to own and to bless. Since God created the world, the Holy Trinity has been the greatest power and it is referred to many times in the Bible as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and on this mundane sphere we know that happiness comes to husband, wife and child. The Bible says that one cannot do much alone, that there is need of two together, and that a threefold cord is not easily broken. Edna, your devotion to Walter has been his inspiration, and has led him to the great discovery, which will relieve suffering in the world. Your confidence in him in placing your life in his hands to test this great discovery, deserves great credit and no honor or reward is too great for you, but the honor that men can give or the world or your government, are but empty and mean nothing to the heart of a loyal woman. You are to have the greatest reward in Walter's love and this means more to you than any honors the world can give. It will satisfy when the shouts of the hero worshippers have died away. When money, with all it can buy, has vanished and nothing remains but the love light in Walter's eyes, you will find happiness. Robert then presented a beautiful brooch made with the seal of Solomon, constructed with a double triangle, and set with three beautiful diamonds. In the center of the seal was a heart, and in the center of the heart was a diamond. He said, Edna, I present this to you as your wedding gift. It will be a symbol to you of how the three of us have worked together in love, loyalty and faith, to accomplish something for others through unselfish devotion. With the love of the one must come the love of the many. One touch of nature makes the whole world kin, and when once a woman's eyes have looked into a man's with understanding love, he need seek no farther for the philosopher's stone, because after that everything he touches will turn to gold. This brooch and the diamonds are emblematic of your purity. The diamonds are the most durable and beautiful of all precious stones. They reflect all the beautiful colors of the rainbow, which reveals God's covenant with man. That is why the diamonds are used as an engagement ring, but few there are who know and understand the real meaning and live in accordance with it. You will ever reflect the beauty of the diamonds. Your love for Walter, which is the love I am sure never changes, will remain fixed as the mountain ranges. Remember that the diamond has gone through the greatest fire and heat and has emerged with all its strength and beauty. You must learn to go through trials and tribulations, to help Walter in time of trouble and to emerge unscathed, reflecting love and beauty. Walter, I commend to your care and keeping, a jewel more precious than diamonds or rubies. A good woman. May your loyalty and devotion ever keep her as such. The dinner was then served and Edna proved that as an after-dinner speaker she had some ability. She arose, drank a glass of pure water, pouring part of it on the floor and said. Mr. Gordon, my vocabulary is now destitute of the poetic rhyme that would be necessary. To bring into existence words to express to you my heartfelt thanks for the favor already in hand. I have been so overgenerous in loving Walter that I feel that I've neglected to extend to you the friendship due to a man of such noble ideals. As I pour this pure water back to earth I am following an ancient custom. Before they entered upon any solemn obligation. They wash their hands in pure water. Touch their lips with pure water. To purify them and to seal the records of the past. They pour the pure water back to earth. In memory of the absent and dead. I pour this pure water back to earth. That in the presence of the living we are not forgetting the absent one. And the greatest wish that I can have for you. Mr. Gordon, is that at a not distant date? Walter and I may have the great pleasure of joining Marie and yourself in an occasion like this. Words are idle now, they mean but little when the heart is touched. I accept your beautiful gift with all gratitude. It is my prayer that the day may come. When you may have another brooch made with two hearts entwined. Set with a single solitaire, emblematic of your faith and pure love for Marie. I pray for you the gifts of all the gods. And may your prayers be answered as the prayers of Pygmalion were. Whose faith and love were so strong that the Grecian gods turned a piece of cold marble into the living form of a beautiful woman. But, Robert, when Marie returns to you in all her beauty. I am sure that you will not act in the way that Pygmalion did when he caused Galatea to pray to the Grecian gods to turn her back to cold marble again. I am sure, yes, I know, that such devotion as yours will keep Marie always when she returns to you. When Edna had finished, Walter arose and said, Robert, there is nothing left for me to say, I thank you. On the 24th of June, Walter and Edna were married. Robert suggested that for their honeymoon they go up through Canada and see the beautiful scenery there. Then go down through California and in the fall and winter. Take a second honeymoon trip to Florida and visit Silver Springs and Sebring. Robert's mind always drifted back to the beautiful places where he thought people in love would find harmony and could commune with nature. 